Check one, two, three. Sorry about that. I didn't realize I had the volume down very low. This is my sound check of my voice. How are the levels? Can you hear me? And is the balance between me and the uh, music? Okay, we're gonna get started in just about two or three minutes. Hope everybody's doing well. Hello, happy, is it Thursday? I am really having trouble probably keeping track of what day it is. Uh, welcome to <laughs> The Coding Train with me, your host, Dan. We'll all just take a deep breath. Just take a big deep breath together, ready? I don't know where you're watching from this, from where in the world you're watching this. I don't know what your circumstances are, what you did what time of day it is, what you did this morning, this afternoon, at night, how you slept, any of those things. But I, all in all, I would just like to know, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? Um, I am based in New York City, specifically in Brooklyn, New York. It has been quite a week of chaos here, uh, if not um, a, a month or a year or the last however many years, wherever you want to get started. Do you hear that noise, by the way? I want to talk about that noise in a second. Um, but um, things are quite in flux um, in the city here, um, uh, specifically where I work, where my day job is at New York University. <laughs> Do you hear that sound? I would like to know, maybe you can't hear it. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna wait for that sound to finish. The, by the way, that is literally the sound of somebody washing their hands, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> Which is, you know, there's a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know, irony or humor there. You gotta have a sense of humor sometimes, although it's important to take things seriously and follow science. I'm also, I don't know, dancing around the topic that is, is on my mind, which is um, what's going on with uh, coronavirus and specifically New York City and New York University. So um, I, nobody's saying they can hear that sound. Oh yeah, I hear it, says DT6. I'll, I'll, let me address that in a second. So um, New York University has, um, Go, um, canceled all in-person classes and events and meetings. Um, there's a lot of other changes going on in the city of New York itself. 
Um, this has caused a lot of us who work at NYU to have to change our daily routines, to revamp our curriculum, to think about different things. I am a person, as you might have noticed, who happens to do a lot of online education e uh, adjacent stuff on the internet. So in many ways, I am set up well to um, engage in and experiment with remote education. But I would say that I think it is something very different to be caring for and uh, teach, uh, caring for a class, a cohort of whether it's six students or eight or 12 or 16 or 20 or 50 or 100 even, which is quite different than um, this sort of like live streaming thing on YouTube. There are relationships and the things I do on this channel I hope are resources to people who are teaching courses that they can create their community, their local community of their course around. But I do, I, I do think it's, um, it's uh, uh, I wanna be careful about um, suggesting that, oh, it's time to do remote education. That's a thing that I do already. It's not. I do a kind of remote education, and maybe a lot of it's filled with like way too much nonsense. But um, um, but yeah. So I don't want to um, I don't want to belabor um, this uh, story. There is a huge amount of stuff to say on it. I am not qualified to prognosticate and predict the future. I'm just kind of working with what I need to do today. And I think actually some of the changes that are happening based on um, looking at uh, reducing the spread of the virus will probably ultimately open up a lot more time for me to live stream or make video tutorials. But actually what's happened to me this week is I'm having a, a lot less time because there's a lot of things that need to be changed. I'm spinning up actually a couple new classes for NYU. Um, I, um, there's just a lot of meetings. and I, Not to mention like um, my son's school closed. <laughs> He's actually uh, having classes with Zoom software at home. He's in fifth grade. Um, and so, you know, I don't have to be there with him right now because I have that covered, but that's, it's a, the puzzle pieces, my daughter's school is still open, but the puzzle pieces of family and all that kind of stuff have become enormously complicated. But I was, did manage to stick to having a live stream today. I started about a half an hour earlier than I originally intended, and I have to leave absolutely 100% at 3.30, which is now about, um, one hour and 50 minutes, if I can still do math on some level. Loud sync. I want that noise to happen again. So bizarrely, I was in here the other day. I actually was making a quick video tutorial for how to do video conferencing with Zoom, which I might try to do some more of that on the channel itself. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was just loud noise, and I thought, you know, the shop, there's a... Sorry, I hit the bell by accident. There's a sh wood shop over there, and I thought, I, it's weird that I never hear the wood shop, and all of a sudden I'm hearing it today. It's some drilling. And I heard it again, and I heard it again. Well, maybe there's, some, there's construction going on in this building. Maybe it was construction. <laughs> then, uh, a little later, I was like, I need to, you know, go to the bathroom, do it number one. I need to wash my hands. I need to wash my hands a lot. <laughs> so I went in to wash my hands. When the water comes out, so right now, during this live stream, <laughs> if we hear the sound, that means somebody is washing their hands, and we should applaud them. Applaud them for washing your hands, for not touching your face. Um, that could be something we could code today, a hand face detector. But I don't want to be due to, I don't want to make light of what is an incredibly complicated and difficult um, and, and life-changing uh, uh, for many people um, situation right now. So that's all I have to say about that. I'm going to move on to... Um, Back to my sort of like usual programming, which is a lot of this stuff. With today's episode of The Coding Train, you have one two day early pie day thing. Getting warm in here. <clears throat> Let me have a fever. Okay, I'm good. I touched my face. <clears throat> All right. Um, we should let us let us now also transition to reading the ceremonial book of random numbers. Mm. Things are a little ominous these days, so. We're going to have to do it. Forty-nine thousand five hundred fourteen. Fifty-six thousand nine hundred seventy-seven. 
61,091. 92,612. Okay. <clears throat> oh, oh boy, Friday the 13th is tomorrow. Okay, you know, I, did, I already probably told my Friday the 13th story um, when I was a little, uh, a young lad, a young lass, lassie, laddie, whatever, whatever it is you say. <sighs> I, had, I had a, a boo-boo, a boo, bad boo-boo on <laughs> Friday the 13th. I don't want to talk about it. It's some old live stream from a year or two years ago. Somebody will find it. So um, this Saturday is March 14th, also known as Pi Day for 314 being the, the 3.14 being the first digits of Pi. Um, I, off, I have in the past done a live stream on Pi Day. I actually was supposed to travel this weekend. I am no longer traveling this weekend. That trip was canceled. So, um, but I don't know what I'll be doing yet this weekend. And I, I, I almost am sure I won't be physically here <laughs> in this building on Saturday. So no Pi Day live stream unless I spin something up from home or something like that. But I thought what I would do today is a coding challenge related to Pi. So it would happen today during this live stream in the next hour and 45 minutes or so. And then uh, uh, Mathieu and I would work in the next 24 hours or so to edit it down to its sort of like core essential components, which would then be released as the Pi Day coding challenge on Saturday. So that is my plan. Um, so that's what's happening today. Now, if some people have been asking in the thumbnail, it says things like OBS basics, NOC chapter three, because I, yesterday and I woke up this morning, I was like, oh, I want to talk about live streaming and how I can use Open Broadcast Studio to record a lecture. And I'm, I'm in Nature of Code, I'm gonna be in chapter three, so I could do a little bit on Nature of Code chapter three. The time, the time, the time, the time, it got compressed. I do want to really think about and maybe come back next week and focus on are there a set of tutorials that I can do to help teachers specifically um, who might be um, um, who who might be doing uh, remote learning might want to record a video lecture are there things that I that that I can help off, uh, make some content about to help people. So specifically, if you're a teacher and there's like a thing, <laughs> uh, I would love to hear from you. Or um, if you have ideas for me, let me know. And maybe next week, you know, a lot of a lot of the what people are doing with remote learning is real time interaction and questions and feedback and smaller groups. And that's not something that I really actually have a lot of experience with. What I have experienced is this much more like one way broadcast. Um, although I, there is sometimes like a chat and different things. Um, but, um, <clears throat> but I would like to offer some resources. One resource I do want to mention, let me just uh, try to find it for a second, um, because there have been a lot of people putting together, um, just hold on, sometimes I can't talk and search. By the way, I have a question. My kids say, search it up. Like, um, you, um, who won the World Series in 1967? Oh, hey dad, just search it up. <laughs> Is that a thing? Do people say search it up? Or did they invent saying search it up? And now it's a thing that people are gonna say because I'm telling you, you could say search it up. It's catchy, trust me. But maybe it's already a thing and I'm your old, old internet man who just says, I will search for it. But now I'm gonna say search it up. I'm searching something up and I can't concentrate. Well, I'm searching it up. I'm searching it up, people! Searching it up! I'm searching it up! <laughs> this is, I'm searching it up. You can't even see what I'm doing. I'm trying to log into Arena. This is what I'm doing. I don't have my password, I'm looking it up. I'm searching it up.
Okay, I found what I was looking for. I searched it up. All right, so this is a lot of people have been putting together resources, and there's a, a Slack channel that um, I know Zach Lieberman had put together for people teaching online in the age of uh, COVID-19. But um, Melanie Hoff, who is one of the organizers of Code Societies at School for Product Competition, an alum of the ITP program, and uh, if you don't if, you're, if you don't know her work, you should check out her work. But she put together this really excellent uh, co arena compilation of all sorts of resources for people who are teaching um, online. So I just wanted to um, uh, highlight that. Um, you can find it at arena slash Melanie dash Hoff slash teaching online. So I would like to come back and, uh, um, and, and maybe if there's time left over at the end, I will answer some questions. Some nice questions came in on Twitter and maybe next week I can make this the subject of an entire live stream. But today, um, I will be um, doing my Pi Day challenge. One more thing! I'm gonna search it up! Oh! Oh, silly me! Silly me, the thing that I'm searching up <laughs> is uh, available. Uh, playlists. Um, no! Private liked videos! I gotta search it up! Okay, uh, the other thing I want to mention is that I am deep into, oh, whoops, whoops, oh no, that shouldn't say one, it should say one, I gotta fix this, I can fix this. Um, I'm working on a entirely new set of Nature of Code videos in JavaScript with P5. These are re, uh, new versions of a video series that I made almost eight years ago at this point, or, or actually eight years ago. And so if, if you're new to the channel, expect a lot of new videos to come out related to this. Um, you can actually see they're all there already. So if the video has a thumbnail, that kind of all that means is, well, a thumbnail was made, a description is there, I made sure the code is online, it's linked. But if you want to kind of get ahead, you can see all of these videos are there. And um, then the forces of the chapter two has started as well. So one thing that I want to say about these videos that some of them are unlisted and some of them are listed, um, especially if a video is unlisted and there's a significant mistake or issue with it, please let me know. Because if it's unlisted, it's very easy for me to delete and re-upload a fixed version. If it's an already published video, it's harder for me to do that. But I, if there's a real significant issue, I will do that. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to have to sing, oh, my ukulele tuner's battery is gone. We have to do some pie day singing maybe today, eating of some pie, who knows. I'm, I'm, I'm out of sorts, people, out of sorts. I searched it up, but I couldn't find it. Uh, Chris Ray asks, are you going to remake a genetic algorithm chapter? Uh, not probably no. You now. No, I don't think so. So, <laughs> um, uh, the genetic algorithm chapter is actually something that I revisited more recently. So there might be some added videos or I might swap in and out a new version of one of those videos. But for the most part, that's going to be, uh, uh, going to stay what I made a couple years ago. But I do have some ideas for some additional ones. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to find myself a text file with one million digits of pi. Um, let's try this. Um, this is good. Uh, one million digits of pi. I'm just going to have to trust that this file is correct. Um, let's put it on the desktop. 
and I want to find a 1 billion, 1 billion digits of pi. I don't think I want to try with 22.4 trillion. That would be nice. Pi to 1.5 billion. This looks like it might be good. Ah, here we go. Pi billion. Um, this is going to be a much larger file, right? Um, is this going to download it effectively? Let's do it this way. Okay. This file is almost a gigabyte, and I have about two minutes left to download it. Okay. Uh, ah! Recording to disk time. <laughs> Start recording. Uh, and multi quarter. Um, I am not going to record to disk the whiteboard view, which I think you are now seeing. I'm not, I don't have my preview up anymore because I keep moving things around. And here we are over here. Um, um, okay. Uh, let's see. Does the whiteboard actually working? It is there. It looks pretty crooked to me. I might skip using the whiteboard today. We'll see. So this is um, my plan. So uh, Fathom Information Design. Um, Pi.fathom.org maybe? No. Fathom, oh, Pi.fathom.com probably. Uh, no. All right. Fine. <laughs> Fathom Pi. Peek in Pi. Dot info. Fathom.info slash pi. This is actually what we're looking for. Pi.fathom.info. <laughs> and in case I did forget, which I did forget, let me also, before I get started coding, say thank you to Brilliant.org, the sponsor of today's Coding Train live stream. Um, I will, uh, so Brilliant is a wonderful uh, website and app and all sorts of, um, uh, where you can learn a lot of stuff. <laughs> And by the way, if you need to learn things remotely these days, this is a really good tool for you to use. Um, but they have some new courses that I'm excited to share with you. And uh, I always have a daily challenge. I always love to do Brilliant's daily challenge. And um, that's something that I will be attempting uh, about halfway through this um, live stream. OK, now, um, and if it wasn't clear, if you want to take a look at Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, <coughs> that will um, let them know that you found this from, from here, and it will also get you a 20% off. You can, you can sign up for free, but if you're interested in the premium uh, subscription, you can get 20% off um, through that URL, the first 200 people to do so. Okay. Um, so I want to make my own... Yeah, thank you, Simon. Uh, so the, I know that's one of the reasons why I don't want to use the whiteboard today. There's something going on with the lighting in this room. What I am interested in attempting to do is make my own version of this wonderful peek inside Pi uh, web application that was created by Fathom Information Design. Um, and so if you don't know about Fathom, it's a wonderful uh, design firm uh, started by Ben Fry, who is one of the creators of processing itself. Um, and so here, what I can do is I can look for any sequence of digits and find where they occur in Pi. So I'm going to type 1, 4, and we're going to see there they are. It's the first digit of pi. And so if I keep searching, there we go. But is there 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, but instead of 2, 1, 4, 1, 5, 9, 6? And it was found as the 731,406th digit of pi. So this is good for us to find because I now want to recreate this exact thing. I'm going to load in a file with 1 million digits of pi, and then I want to create an interface where I type this in. I'm going to have to say all this again, <laughs> but I'm getting myself set up because I'm going to do that. I'm going to want to create an interface where I type this in, and then I want to find where, if that sequence exists, in the number of digits of pi that I have, and if so, where. And while I'm going to do this in JavaScript, while I could just use the built-in index of function, I'm going to write my own search in a string algorithm because um, 
once I get to 1 billion digits, am I going to run into performance issues? And so um, here it is. This was one of the Pi Day suggestions. Um, and uh, in this suggestion, um, there's also another website. I think that's actually where I downloaded the digits from, it looks like. But there's also other algorithms, one known as Boyer Moore, which I actually have never heard of until I saw it posted, um, um, which, maybe, which optimizes this kind of brute force search. So I don't know if I'm going to have time to actually implement this. And uh, ya Hash and Yas is asking, that's crazy. <laughs> Yay, thank you. I want to do something crazy. Uh, you can't load this Pi file into the browser. Correct. So I will be using a node server once I get to the 1 billion uh, digits. OK. Um, so this is the plan. And I'm gonna, I would like this to be all one video. So uh, all of that explanation, unfortunately for you, the live viewer, I'm going to kind of restart. Um, so hopefully say it more succinctly. Um, and then just get to coding. And hopefully I'll be done by an hour and a half from now. I'll take a short break, about a half an hour, 45 minutes from now. And then this will get edited and put together into a video uh, to be published um, on Saturday. Any questions? I got a lot of questions. So many questions. OK. What? OK. Start this over. Got my P5 sketch. Peak in pi, 1 billion digits, um, pi search page. Um, pi day challenge, all right. OK, um, I think I'm ready. Uh, Wilhelm is asking, why is he not using processing for this? Hmm. Good, good point, good question. I could use processing for this. Eh, I feel like using the browser. So I could do this in processing. I could do that as a follow-up video. I, I'll mention it. That's, a, that's actually a great question. Ah! Good job. Good job. Oh. Good job. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> here we go. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, wheel it all out, wheel it all out. Okay, Woof. okay. Happy Pi Day! <laughs> Welcome to today's, this year's, 2020's Coding Train Pi Coding Challenge. And I thank you to Fatin Bibas, who suggested this idea, find a sequence in Pi. So this is the challenge I'm going to take on for this year's Pi Day. I'm saying the same thing many, many times. I get one chance to start over. One time I get to start over. I used, I, I, I used the ukulele last year. This will be more just coding, coding, coding. Okay. Okay. Happy Pi Day. Hello, welcome to 2020 Pi Day coding challenge thing that I'm about to do. Oh. I really got to get going because if I keep restarting this, we're going to be in big trouble because I have to, no matter what, leave at 3.30. There is no 
And, and I mean, when I say 3.30, I mean, I mean, so I should really be saying three. <laughs> I really got to leave by 3.30. Okay. <sighs> Happy Pi Day. It's 2020. This year's Pi Day. It's today. And I would like to do, it's not really today because I'm recording this a couple days early, but I would like you to see this on Pi Day, a coding challenge themed around the number pi. And thank you to Fatin Bibas, uh, who uh, suggested this one, Pi Day, Find a Sequence in Pi, issue number 1464. I wonder if those numbers are where they are in pi. Ooh, we'll find out by the end of this video. Um, how to look at how one might search for any given sequence of numbers in pi. And this can lead to a lot of other things, like what if those numbers were uh, encoded as music? Or what if music was encoded as numbers? Or what if you took a text, a message, and encoded as numbers? Could you find secret messages in pi? Melodic phrases in pi? There's so many creative possibilities that you could create from my code. I'm gonna do something really, really basic. Now, um, in this suggestion, this particular website, um, angio.net slash pi, is mentioned. It has a bunch of different resources, uh, a resource of where you can download all the digits of pi, a place to search for pi. But I, uh, this, th this, um, whoops. <clears throat> edit point, edit point. This is what's going to be edited out. It'll be funny if we actually keep that in. See? Ah, meta, meta. <laughs> this all reminded me of a wonderful project from Fathom Information Design. So if you don't know about Fathom, they're an, an information design uh, uh, firm based in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, founded by Ben, ben Fry, who was one of the creators of Processing Itself. You can find out more at fathom.info. But they created this project, Peak Inside Pi, which you can play with at pi.fathom.info. There's also uh, an, an app version, a lot of other versions. I'll link to all those things in the video description. So the idea here is that I can type, or I could tap. Can I tap? Where is it? No, oh, it's not working. My touch screen doesn't work. Let's see if I can fake it. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> no, that's two, that's the wrong number. Oh well. The point is, for any given sequence, like 14159, look, I can search for it right here, and there it is. It's found at the first digit of pi. So now, let's pick another sequence. Like, what's a wonderful sequence? It is, today's date is March 14th, 2020. And that is not in the first one million digits of pi. Ah, if only we had more digits. I must have more digits. So this particular web app is searching through the first one million digits of pi, and that's what I want to create first. Let's just uh, try this. So the number 03, oops, 03-14202 is available, is found. <laughs> oh, Simon's, Simon's, Simon's interrupting my flow. <laughs> You're interrupting my flow with all the at mentions. <laughs> Please, few, only, only really urgent at mentions, please. <laughs> um, but he does. Simon does have a great suggestion. I'm told that I should search for the number nine 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 nine, which is the seven hundred and sixty second digit of pi. So let's remember that and make sure when I write my own version of this that I uh, find the same digit. So I'm going to do this at first. I'm going to do this with p5.js, JavaScript in the browser. I'm, it's not going to be as nicely designed with a beautiful interface like this, but I'm first going to recreate this exact thing. And then, and then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from 1 million digits to 1 billion digits and see if I can still search for any digit in pi. And probably I'm going to fail because we're going to need some kind of like optimization. It's going to all going to run too slow. Everything's going to come crashing down. But I'm going to try nonetheless, and we'll see where we get to by the end of this video. And I, I, I should mention, just in case I don't end up covering it, um, there are um, optimal ways to search for a string uh, to, to search for a string inside of a larger string, and one of those algorithms is called the Boyer-Moore algorithm. And so, uh, depending on where I get by the time I get to the end of this video, uh, I don't know why I'm talking about this now, because at the end, I'll know where I've gotten to. Mm. Um, depending on where I get to, <laughs> um, that might be something that you could also do uh, as your own, as a contribution when I, uh, that, that could also be something that you do as your own contribution uh, on the codingtrain.com itself by making an optimized version of this. All right. <laughs> I 
Okay, here we go. Let me just put this in applications. Okay. I'm starting with a simple P5 sketch and two text files. One with one billion digits of pi, which is just a megabyte, and one with one billion digits of pi, which is a eh, gigabyte. That's a much bigger file. So let's start with the one megabyte file. I've uploaded it. I've uploaded that file to the P5 web editor and I can load all the text from that file right now using preload. I'm going to just take away animation here. I'm going to get rid of the draw loop. And I'm going to say no canvas. And then the file itself has all of the digits in pi in one line. But load strings loads text files into an array with each element of the array being a different line of the text file. So what I'm going to do here is create a variable called digits and just say it is the first element in that raw data array. Let's console log digits and just see what happens. OK, so all of the digits of pi are down here in the console. Now what I want to do is search for a given digit. Let's make an interface, a very, very crude, simple interface for searching. So now I have this little, tiny, tiny search box up here. Can I make that bigger? Oh, this is one of the things I hate. Give me a second here. This is one thing I don't love about using the web editor because can I zoom an iframe? Can I just make that bigger? Can I do it with the CSS? I don't want to go crazy here. Um, if I do something like just say, what is it, like text size or something? I don't know, CSS. Somebody tell me how to put some global CSS in. <laughs> Font size? OK. No, <laughs> that seemed to work, but it didn't make the text file. Do I need to do it for like input? Hey, there we go. Perfect. Okay, that's Probably bigger than I need. There we go. That's plenty visible now. OK. I also just added a, I, I also just increased the font size for any input element on the page so it's a little easier for you to see. But that's, you know. The interaction that I'm looking for is anytime anyone types anything into that search box, I want to look for that string, that, that those digits in pi itself. Search. <laughs> and p5.js has a special event function called input which you can call on the search box and pass another function that will be executed anytime uh, a change has been made. So let me write that search it up function because that's what, when I'm looking for something, I say search it up. Um, and then uh, 
I'm going to be a little silly and make these uh, global variables. And I'm going to then, then let me get what I'm searching for. from the search box and console log that. So now, whenever I type anything into that search box, I should see what I type here in the console. And that's working. <laughs> this is going to actually be a really easy project to do. You know why? Because I can just use the index of function in JavaScript itself. Let me do that real quick. Just please, please, can I just do that real quick? I'm going to do that real quick. Digits index of search. So this is saying, look inside this search string and give me back the index of where. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> this is saying, look inside the long string digits and give me the index of wherever this string search happens to appear. If it doesn't appear, I'll take a negative one, please. So I'm going to say create. Um, let's make another um, element on the page. Um, and. No. How do I make that? People, I don't know CSS at all. Help me out here. <laughs> at least it's making it red when it's wrong. Font color? No. Color? It should be color, right? I mean, I could make a background color. That I know will work. No. Oh, this is wrong. Oh, I need another F there. <laughs> That's the wrong number of digits. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. There we go. OK. Yeah. Tiss, tiss, don't. Ah. So now when I get that index back, I can say index p.html, that index which will put the actual index where it's found in the paragraph text there on the web page. So for example, if I say 14159, hmm, why does it say 2? So really when counting the digits of pi, what seems to be the convention is the first digit is the first digit after the period. So it's 3 point, the first digit is 1. So I should really say um, index minus 1. And now 14159, I got 1. And then what if I say 9999999? Negative 2. Oh, except for negative 2. All right. So we got it. 999999 appears at the 762nd digit in pi. I'm also going to write a little if statement here, say if index is greater than, uh, well, I guess if I'm looking for three, that's a bug. <laughs> so if I'm looking for three, that's at zero, which is minus one. How do I, do I want to handle that bug? <sighs> index of must let me start searching from a certain character, right? Uh, start from index 2. Great. Uh, 
So if it's a three, I don't want it to find that zero digit. So I'm going to start searching from uh, index two. And there. Oops. Great. So I guess I hope that's right. But a three it doesn't appear until. The chat is also rightfully pointing out that I could just chop off the first two digits of the string. Ah, that would be much too easy. I'm going to do it this way. Uh, so I'm going to start from looking at digit two. And I'm going to say, as long as index is greater than uh, zero, set that. Otherwise, say um, I'm going to say Otherwise, I'll put a message about it not being found. Okay, so let's try. 14159, 999999, not found. So I now have essentially, without the care and thought uh, into the interaction design, the visual design, the layout of the page, all of those elements, recreated my, uh, my own version of this peek inside pie. I got, this video's not over though. I got two more things I want to do. Number one is I want to just investigate what does it mean for me to actually perform this search myself, to write my own index of function. Because maybe if I do, that might unlock some other creative possibilities and also I might learn something about programming. And then once I do that, let me increase things up to one billion digits and see if this still works, which it won't. Um, and um, um, I'm reading the chat. I shouldn't be reading the chat. Let me increase things to one billion digits and see what happens, what breaks down once I have a one gigabyte file that I'm loading all the digits of pi in as opposed to a one megabyte file. All right, so let's first write our, our own index of function. So I'm just going to change them to comment this out. And I'm going to say let index equals index of a uh, search in this string for this search string. Okay, So search in the string digits for the string search. And so the function looks like this. Its name is index of. It needs to receive a block of text and the substring that you're searching for in that text. OK, I'm thinking about this. Let's say we do this. Let's start with what's the first character in the search string. Then I want to iterate over the entire string of text and say, hey, does this character in the entire string of text match the first character of the search string. If so, I need another loop with j starting at i plus 1. Well, actually, let's do it this way. Let's then I need to loop through all of the characters of that search string. Why do I have an error here? 
bad assignment. Oh, this is supposed to say four. So I don't need to start at zero because I've already checked to make sure that's zero. And I want to check is text car at i plus j the same as search car at j. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not worrying about running this optimally or elegantly. I just want to get the core idea out. I'm starting with, and I really should use the whiteboard for this. Mm. Do I dare? The whiteboard is all like weird and shadowy. This light, for, there's a, like a nice bright light that's always been in this room that is very dim today. Let's just see. Is it two? Oh, you can't even see that. <laughs> That's so sad. Three point one four one five nine. And let's say I'm looking for the string four one five. So in the example I'm building, this is the text. Oh, jeez. Let me just start over. OK. Thanks. That, that, that person is, I, don't know, I feel like the water, they should be running the water a little bit longer. That was kind of a short, a little short spurt. What comes after the nine, people? Is it two? I hope it's two. So let's say this is my text. And what I'm looking for is, I want to find out where is 415 in that particular string. This is my search. Sorry, my watch is buzzing at me. And I am going to turn that off because I'm being adventured again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm a jolly, happy person. I'm not actually bothered by anything. <laughs> I just like to play act. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this is my text, and this is my search string. What I have going on here is I know the first character of what I'm searching for is four. So I, the index I, is starting here and, and looking, is that four, is that four, is that four, is that four? Aha! This is four. Now let's... Uh, let's save our. Let's save this spot, and then based on this length three, which let's let's iterate over this length with j zero one two, and let's add j to i zero one two, and see if all those digits continue to match. Um. Uh, okay. So ultimately, really what I'm looking for here is any, things, any of those digits that aren't the same. So I really want to look for, first, I'm going to be very strict about this and use the triple equals. There's a funny thing in JavaScript, if you haven't encountered this before, where uh, if I use double equals, this will return true. But if I use triple equals, they won't. So it's a little like double equals is a little bit of a fuzzier truth, and triple equals is like, no, 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 those things are really, 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 really equal. Fuzzier equals, I guess. Um, I don't know if that's necessary to explain. We can probably edit that out. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to say not equals. So basically, I'm, I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to make a guess that I found it. 
right? As soon as I find that, as soon as I find the first character, as soon as I find the first character to be the same, aha, I found it. And then anytime I find any to be different, I can now say found equals false. So the question becomes right here, if found is true, then I can break out of things. And once one is not true, I don't need to check the rest, so I can break out. And then, if found, uh, return what? So I'm going to say let found index equals negative one. I'll give a default value of negative one. And then, actually, if I've found it right here, um, found index should equal what? I, wherever we started with, I. And then, a little bit lost in terms of all the loops going on here. And then if I've gone through every possibility and I haven't found it, then I'm gonna get to the end and I'm still just going to return negative one, but found index will have negative one. So if I found it somewhere, I'm going to set it equal to that first index, get out of the loop. I don't need to check anymore because I'm just looking for the first instance and then return what I found. I must have made a mistake here somewhere, right? There's no way this could be correct. <laughs> and um, I'm going to add a third argument for offset. Um, and I can uh, say, <laughs> and just as a really quick hack, I'm just going to start at index equals two to skip the three. I mean, whatever. Let, this is fine. Let me just start at. The Ah. <laughs> Let's run and see if this works. <laughs> no. Found is not defined sketch line 22. This if statement has got to be inside here. Right? This is where I'm looking at every single character in the large string I'm searching through. As soon as one of those characters is equal to the start, check, every, check all the subsequent characters, and then if I found it, uh, break out of that larger loop and uh, keep going. So th this should be right now. I'm sure there's other mistakes, but that will be fixed. All right, 14159 at digit number one, which is right, weirdly enough. I didn't subtract out the one anywhere. Ah, uh, right. So the chat is giving me a nice uh, quick uh, uh, optimization. The chat is giving me a nice suggestion where I could simplify this code where I don't actually need this found index because I could just return i, which will automatically break out of the loop. And then if I get to the end, I could just return negative one. So let's try that again. Yeah. Why is that one? Shouldn't that be zero, one? Shouldn't that be getting two? Oh, I'm already subtracting the one there. <laughs> Great. Great, so this works. Uh, let's try the 999 thing. There we go. So this is done. And this algorithm has no problem with one million, uh, searching in a string of one million characters. Uh, it be interesting to think of what is the, um, let's try a different number. Um, Uh, 
Um, Two thirty, excellent. I'm going to be taking a break soon. Uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, thank you, Simon, about the uh, noting the thing about brilliance. I will check that. Um, big O notation. One thing I'd like to think about here is what is the big O notation for this particular algorithm? So when I talk about big O notation, why is it O again? Uh, order, that's what I thought, okay. One of the things that I would love to consider here is what is the big O notation for this particular algorithm? Big O for the order of the algorithm. How long, how many computational cycles are required to search for a string of n characters in a larger string also of, uh, of, of n characters? Oh boy. Yeah, is there a way, is there any moderators here who can help me with this? Um, report. Uh, okay. Um, o M N, yeah. Um, I use it on this channel. Okay. I'm trying to moderate this. <laughs> oh, if anybody uh, uh, wants to. Uh, help me with that, that would be great. Oh my God, so many of them. Um. Are there no uh, moderators alive uh, watching that? Oh, hey, Topher J is here. Thank you, thank you, Topher J. <laughs> Train whistle for you. All right. So let's think about this. Right. I'm going to start this thought over. So before I move on, I want to think about the big O notation. What I mean is, what is the order? What is the computational complexity of this particular search algorithm? So I have a string I'm searching through, and it has its length is n characters. And then I'm searching for another string whose length is m characters. When, we're, when considering big O notation, the idea is to think about the worst case scenario. How long does it take if I'm not going to find it, basically, or if I find it at the very, very end of that string? So I know I need n checks. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to n. So it is at least big O order n. But for every one of these, I've also got to check, I mean, if I find one of them, I've got to check all of these. So really, I think it should be um, how, like if there's 10 digits here, and there's three digits here, that's 30 checks. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Now, of course, it's less than that because I only had to check these three when I see the four matches. But imagine if this whole string were fours, and then this were also a four, I'd always have to keep checking. So it's really just n times m n times n. And let's remember that for when we start looking at 1 billion digits. Oh. So is that like reduced to just saying um, n? Um. Yeah, I know. I know there's some bots in the chat. I apologize about that. I have like really not usually had this problem, so I've never had to um, sort of deal with it. But there's some folks on the case here, so um, a 
hopefully we can do. <sighs> What's crazy is the bots are just like, it's confusing because what they're doing is they're taking other chat messages that other people have posted and then reposting them with some extra emojis. It's kind of amazing. Um, I don't know how to permanently ban an IP. Um, so we'll see what we do. Okay. Yeah. And let me say that. And even though ultimately the order is, the big O notation is N times M, because the idea here, N, is going to be so much larger than what I'm looking for in M, this can be sort of reduced down to a um, operation of order N, which isn't so bad, to be perfectly honest. So to tie a little bow around this, we say that this is big O notation N for the length of the search string, the string that I'm searching in. All right, so I'm going to take a short break. Maybe this will also help us get rid of the bots. <laughs> They're very emotional, these bots. Um, and I um, um, <clears throat> and I am going to take a minute to tell you about uh, the sponsor of today's Coding Train live stream, which is uh, ah, wrong button, wrong button. Br brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant is, has been a longtime sponsor of The Coding Train. I'm very thankful for having the sponsor. It's a website, an app um, that I really enjoy. Um, if you're interested in interactive learning, almost like you're trying to do some learning from home these days, I don't, um, this could be a useful website to you. They have a lot of online courses. And one of the things that I really love is how the courses are interactive. So I want to tell you about some, some new stuff um, whoops, that uh, is um, that, that to, to highlight for you that are different than maybe what I've highlighted before. And so um, there's a new um, calculus in a nutshell course. Um, and calculus is a language used by ecologists, urban planners, physicists. You need kind of calculus to do stuff on the coding train to describe the world. But it's often a lot of formulas and a lot of memorization. So Brilliant takes a bird's eye view using visual and physical intuition. By the way, the next one I want to tell you about the neural network one, which is what's playing right now, to present major pillars of calculus, limits, derivatives, integrals, and infinite sums. So in that calculo calculus course, there's a lot of uh, sort of background material Material through interactive lessons that can really support the stuff that I'm doing on my channel. Um, I'm really excited about this new um, neural network course. I'm a little behind in talking about it in terms of when the videos are auto-playing. But what you're seeing here is um, a couple uh, simple games that you could play interactively in the browser to learn the basics of how neural network functions. So uh, wiring up neurons and a process of feedback, you can build a network, you can get to build your own network that classifies handwritten digits. And then there's another game, um, which you just saw, uh, called Where Are My Keys? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come, uh, it doesn't take too long to play, so I'm gonna come back and explain to you that one when it comes back on. I'll work on my timing next time. <laughs> it's really been a rough week, people. But this is what I'm talking about in terms of the calculus course, being able to play with formulas and visualizations and graphs in an interactive way. It's a really fun thing to do. And, and you know the formulas can be scary, but this will really help you. So this is uh, the neural network course. So let me tell you about this, this keys one, which will show up in a minute. So the, the, the idea is that you want to find your keys in a messy room. So the tiles color in as you search, and this is still doing the handwritten digits, um, revealing how close or far your last guess was from the keys. So it's going to start. So that's what this is. So you're looking at, ah, is that close? Kind of like hot or cold, this game. I mean, I feel like my kids play this game. And basically, without any clear indication of how to structure your guesses, you can nevertheless get better round after round, adjusting your response to feedback, eventually finding the keys. And this is really analogous to this sort of feedback-based process, um, the way that neural networks learn. So you can just go right ahead, and you can sign up for Brilliant for free right now, just by going to brilliant.org slash coding train. Um, if you're in, uh, and a lot of the content is there for free. So, if, for example, something that is for free are these um, daily challenges. I'm going I'm to try to do one of them right now. Uh, Simon was mentioning to me that actually maybe my search string algorithm is part of, let me see if I can find um, his message, uh, computer science algorithms archive. Let's try looking that up. Uh, Brilliant.org courses computer science algorithms 
dash archive. So somewhere in this course, maybe, maybe there's a section on substring finding. So um, um, when I, well, maybe I need a more, a, a, a more direct link right to it, or I might have typed in something wrong, but um, I will uh, find it and share it with, with the community, either here in this live stream or on Discord, um, if I don't get to before. But I want to do one of the challenges. These are my favorite things to do. Um, let's just try the one that's right here. What is round and spins with teeth all over? So the operation of a system of gears, and I've lost my chat here for a second. Um, follows only one rule. Teeth in contact always move in the same direction at the same rate. So based on the size, you can see as this is run, uh, 10 rev revolutions per, per minute, I guess, RPMs per second, whatever. Rotations per minute, yes. 10 rotations per minute, revolutions, revolutions per minute. Um, the larger one rotates at two RPMs because the ratio of the size, the bronze gear has 10 teeth. Oh, it's the number of teeth, and the gold gear has 50 teeth. Okay. So, oh, oh I, I think I see what this is going to be already. In the gear system below, a set of silver gears is introduced having 20 teeth. The silver gear on the left turns clockwise at 10 rotations. What speed and direction will the one on the right have? So I'm just going to be using my intuition here. But one thing, let's, say, let's figure out which direction it's going to move. So if I zoom in on this for a second, this one's moving clockwise. So this one will move counterclockwise. So this one will move clockwise. So this one will move counterclockwise. So it's counterclockwise. So one of the things that, I've been, that, I, that I work on with my kids is like if you're taking a multiple choice test, um, you can you always get to eliminate things. So maybe I'm not going to be able to figure the rest out, but I kind of now know it's one of these two. Now my intuition is it's going to be counterclockwise at 10 because ultimately the, what is, what, what is uh, the way to calculate the amount of uh, rotations per minute has to do with the relative uh, ratio of teeth. And that one at the right <laughs> is the same as the one to the left. So even if it's like becomes a smaller number, which becomes a much bigger number, which becomes back to a smaller number, it should be 10. So I'm guessing it is counterclockwise at 10 RPM. I hope I'm right about this. But like I like to say, it's great to be wrong because when you're wrong, that's when you really learn. Um, so I should really be happy with being wrong. It sometimes can feel a little embarrassing. But guess what? Life is embarrassing. All right, uh, let's hit submit. Probably all figure this out much faster than me. Correct. Whew. All right. And let's see. Oh, look, here someone's got a nice explanation and formula, um, which is that, oh, because I guess you could count the teeth. So this is 10 which means this is, why does it say 40 here but 20 here? I have to think about this. There might be an, an error somewhere here. Um, <clears throat> but um, you can see the idea. Let's look at some other solutions. Yeah, 20 divided by 10, 10 divided by 50, 50 divided by 20. Get back to 10. Yeah, this is a nice, succinct way of, of, of saying it. So anyway, if you have some clever ideas, uh, first of all, this would be an awesome thing to simulate with P5.js to make this animate. That would be really fun to do. So if you are interested, to, that would be a great coding challenge to do. You could try it. Um, and if you have other ideas for great answers to put here, you could, um, you could put them here. And Florence, I'm not going to answer your question about what IDE I use. You're always just chatting, 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 Florence. Okay, when is the CNN video coming? Oh, I don't think I, artist, let me, okay. I gotta take a break. Let me take a break and see if there's anything I could do. If anybody knows, um, <clears throat> Simon is telling me the course is called Algorithms. During the break, I'm gonna look for it, see if I can find it. If anybody knows any way that I could uh, effectively ban the bots more definitively, um, uh, let's see if I can try to do that during the break as well. So I'm going to just take a five minute break and be back to try to search through a billion digits with no .js in about 40 minutes. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I'm going to try.
All right, folks, I'm starting back up in just a minute or two because my time is super limited. So, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, um, I'm back. Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm doing a shortened break. Uh, a couple of things. One is, looks like I need to get like something like Nightbot or something to, which is a tool that I can use to maybe manage the chat better. Um, the only at present, just manually, we have to like hide users. So if the new counts keep being being made, um, so um, I'll look for the next time. I will look into setting up Nightbot for um, for the next stream. Somebody please remind me of this in Discord. If you haven't joined the Discord, join the Discord. Uh, somebody can hopefully post that uh, um, <clears throat> that uh, link to the um, the chat right now. Um, if you have uh, moderator privileges, you can post a link to the Discord. That's where all of the community activity happens outside of the actual live streams. Okay. <sighs> Uh, this is a very bad idea what I'm going to attempt to do right now because I probably should just call it a day. That was a nice little thing that I made and I could talk, wrap it up and talk about other things you could do. But I am going to um, just uh, uh, bear with me. I'm going to get myself set up to do a part two of this.
Okay. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> um, what I am, so let me, let me do something here. Let me get the browser open. Oh, did I mention, by the way, so we found it. In the algorithms course on Brilliant, um, there's a whole course section in the algorithms course under substring searches. So, oh boy, I really wish I had gone through this before I started today, but I will take a look at it and uh, come, maybe, maybe it'll help come back to it. Simon had mentioned DFA and KMP algorithms. I don't actually know what those are, but um, maybe I can look those up and, and offer them as thing suggestions. Okay. All right, so, so I, you know what? I don't know that I'm, just in case I can't even come back to, just in case this needs to be a two-parter, um, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna record a little ending as if, um, um, I'm gonna do the next steps in, um, in a second part, so oh, I don't like having a time pressure thing. Definitely do not have enough time. We'll see what I do. I might have to come back tomorrow somehow. We'll see if I can figure it out. Okay. DFA, let me just look at what these are. DFA algorithm, search string, is that a thing? Pattern searching, PDF, DFA based algorithm. Um, and KMP. Huh, I'll, I'll figure that out. All right. So this really wraps up a small piece of this coding challenge. I have made my own version of Fathom Information's peak inside Pi. I even wrote my own string search function. There's so much more that you could do with this to be creative. I mentioned at the top that you could think about what if what you weren't looking for were just numbers, but you were looking for some other piece of data that's encoded into numbers. So could you find secret messages in Pi or pieces of music in Pi? Um, are there other kinds of algorithms that you could explore that you could optimize this particular search algorithm with? with? Um, and I'll list some of those in the video's description. That's a little challenge out to you to research some of those and tell me about your favorite substring search algorithm in the comments. Um, but those are going to be needed for when I take the next step and attempt to get this working with a billion digits of pi. And for that, I'm also going to need a node server. So I'm gonna come back and do that in a part two to this video. It might be right there for you to watch right now, but if you're kind of watching this right when the video came out, it's probably not there yet, but don't worry, I'm definitely getting to this one. So stay tuned for a part two where, and I don't even know, I haven't done it yet, so it might not actually work, but I'm gonna do my best to get a version of this working where I can search for any sequence of digits within one billion digits of pi. And from there, the sky of pi is the limit. See you soon. And all right. I don't know. <clears throat> Let's see where I get to. I'm going to need to use read stream. I think I can. So um, <clears throat> we'll figure this out later. <laughs> it's good to have a plan. <clears throat> I think I, I just need like a little extra time today. Oh, I'm so close. Um, <clears throat> I'm not leaving, you don't have to say goodbye. <laughs> All right. I have an idea, I have an idea, I have an idea. Let me just keep going, okay. So here I am in the sketch I wrote previously. What do I do? I'm really, I'm obsessing, just so you know, I'm obsessing in my head about what this is gonna become later, which I really shouldn't do. I should just let, let, the, let the coding flow. Let it just happen. 
Oh, today is one of those days. I'm really having a hard time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. This is going to be two. It's going to be two short videos. Part one and part two. Or not. I don't know. I can't decide. <laughs> So here's what I have so far. I made this sketch where if a digit appears in the first... <laughs> so here's what I have so far. I made this sketch. No, go away, Apple thingy. So here's what I have so far. I've made a sketch where if I type in any sequence of digits, like 8, 3, 6, 5, 1, 8, oh, it'll give me the index into the first million digits of pi where that sequence can be found, or if it's not found, it'll tell me it's not found. And I'm doing this by just loading a text file with the first million digits of pi and searching in it. So on, on, at the very least, I could be like, oh, OK, let's run this exact same code, but now let's take a text file that has a billion digits of pi. So I'm going to go back to uh, add file here, and I'm going to go back to my file system, ignore that part. And I'm going to come over here. I'm going to find my billion, billion dollar, my, my billion digit pi file. Drag that into the browser here and, hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm surprised I'm not really getting an error message or anything, but the web editor will not let you upload a file that big. And even if it could, am I really going to expect my client side code to load? A one, uh, a, a one gigabyte file with a billion characters in it. Now, there's plenty of ways probably that file could be compressed, uh, encoded in a different way, probably get down to like 600 megabytes or something. But that's not really my concern. My concern is how can I load that file into memory? Oh, David, you're here. I'm still here. <laughs> Welcome. <clears throat> but whether it's 600 megabytes or a gigabyte, I've still really got the same problem. I have this like huge file. So rather than try to work with it client side in any type of clever way, I'm just going to use a node application. By the way, I could probably do this in processing because a desktop piece of desktop processing is not going to have any problem loading a really large file. But I want to stay into JavaScript. I'm going to create a node server that can load all of the digits, store them into memory, and then my client-side JavaScript code could query that node server. Now, if you've never used Node before, I do have a few basic beginner tutorials about installing Node and getting set up with Node, and I'll refer you to those. But I'm going to start from the point where I have a directory uh, with a blank JavaScript file, a package.json file to describe my project that I'm building, and both a million digit and billion, uh, billion digit file of pi. So I'm going to start by working in index.js to write some code to load that file. So first I need to require the file system module. And one thing that I could just do is just with the million digits of pi, let's just read file sync. Let's just read the whole file in. And see what happens. Oh, interesting. So the file has been read in, but look how it's being displayed. It's giving me uh, the binary information into the console. So I want to tell it that I want to read it as a string, and I'll use uh, UTF-8. So that's a second argument to read file sync. And now, here we go. And there's all those digits of pi, all those one million digits. Now let's just change it to, why not change it to a billion? What could possibly go wrong? <sighs> oh. Mm. Interesting. Uh, it did something, but it didn't print anything out. So I don't know. This is just basically a bad idea. I don't know whether something crashed or memory ran out, but read file sync for a gigabyte file is not a good idea. And I think what I want to investigate here is create stream, create read stream. So let me just look for that. Uh, let's just find this page. No, this is. I don't want this page. I just want the documentation page. Here we go. 
So I'm on the node documentation page, read stream, or create, yeah, here we go. Create read stream. So create read stream is a function I can call to create a, <laughs> so create read stream is a function I can call to open up a stream for reading the file so I can read it bit by bit. I can kind of track how long it's going to take and get what I want and piece it together. It just gives me a lot of options. So let me do that by saying uh, stream equals fs create read stream. And let's go back to the uh, million. And then once I have a stream, I believe that I can uh, basically handle different events. So for example, I can say stream on data. That's when anything is actually coming in. Um, I can then have a callback function and just console log the data. I've got a problem. Why is there a four space tab? What happened? What happened to you, Visual Studio Code? Okay. No! Help me, somebody help me. I can't deal with it. The number of spaces a tab is equal to two, two, based on the file contents when editor detect indentation is on. What do I want? Somebody help me. I can't take it. CJ, are you out there somewhere? Oh, CJ's in the chat. Help me, help me. I can't go on. I can't go on. I mean, there's nothing wrong with four spaces. I just, I can't handle it. Where, 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 where? Open, open, modified settings. Huh? Here? Huh? Tab size? Two? 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 Okay. 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 Hmm? Where do I get the, where do I just get the JSON file? The, the interface has changed. I'm so confused. Ah, there we go. Tab size. Two. Two. Format on save. True. True. Two. Okay. Okay. Bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Bottom right. Ah, here we go. Thank you. How do I change this? Indent uses spaces. Two. Ah. ah. Whew. Thank you, everybody. Oh, no, no. Huh. Oh, it went back. There we go. Okay. We're okay now. I don't know. How do I permanently change that? Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Oof. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. So now, if I run this, hopefully, I'm going to see all of those digits streaming out. I'm still just going to use the million, uh, the million digit uh, file. Okay. Oh, I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting the binary data. So probably I can say just data to string. Great. So that's the million digits of pi. I'm sort of curious to do console.log. Um, like how big are the chunks that it's reading this in? Yeah, you can see. So you can see these are the chunks that it's reading the data in. They're pretty large uh, because I put some line breaks in between each, each, each chunk of the stream. In fact, I think a lot of examples use the word sort of like chunk here. So now let's try 1 billion digits of pi. Ah, OK. We have one billion digits of pi. Boy, this is taking a while. Ah, there we go. All one billion digits. Could I possibly just put them all into one string?
And then, aha, if I have stream on, I believe it's end. I think there's an end and a close. And by the way, if this arrow syntax isn't familiar to you, it's a nice way of writing uh, callback and anonymous functions. And there's a lot more to it than that. And I have a whole video about arrow functions that you can watch. Uh, let's just do digits.length and see if we get 1 billion digits. Uh, hmm. Digits is not defined. Data. Digits. And look at that. It's 1 billion and 2 because the 3 and the 1 don't actually count. OK. Now let's just search for a digit. <gasps> I might be able to finish this. Oh, OK, let's go fast, fast, fast. Ah, I got to start up a, a web server and all that kind of stuff. OK, OK, OK. Um, let's grab my um, index of function that I wrote previously and bring it into the node code. And then let's look for, I'm just going to hard code this. Let's search, what was I looking for? 999. Let's look for 999. And then index of digits search. And then uh, console.log index. Seven sixty three. Oh, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Okay, so that works. Now here's the thing, that didn't take very long because that is actually found at seven hundred sixty two. Does anybody know of a sequence of digits that's very very far into the sequence of a billion digits? That would be helpful to know. While you're thinking about that, for those of you who happen to be watching this live, not in the recorded video that you right now, not you watching this live, but you watching this later are watching, um, let's just quickly add in a web server so I can make a call to ask for the location of a given digit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's my very basic example? Data selfie app, this works. Okay. So in this video, I'm not going to go through all of the pieces of adding a web server and how HTTP requests work and get requests and response and all that stuff. But guess what? If you're interested in a much lengthier series about all of the details that I'm going to add quickly right now, you can find that in the Working with Data and APIs in JavaScript uh, learning playlist that I have on this channel. But for now, I'm going to go and copy paste, but I'm copy pasting from the code that I have for those examples. Right here, I want to create an Express app. So I'm going to add an Express app. I, want, I don't need this database stuff, so I just need to create an app, Express. I want to uh, listen at port 3000. And then I need just a get request. So I'm going to grab this. Um, I just want to handle one route. Um, I'm going to say get whenever I uh, I'm going to just call this route search. And then here, how do I find the digits? Um, wait, hold on. Yeah, request.body. Oh, I just need a simple get request. Where, how do I do that thing, thinking of Bob, where if it's got parameters, <laughs> is that not in this example? Um, is it in this example? Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. Sorry, I want this one. Um, yeah, OK. Actually, I'm going to call this pi. And then I'm going to use, what are those things called? Resty and routes, something like that, to uh, look for uh, some se sequence of digits. 
And let's, let's call it search. Let's keep it with search, some sequence of digits. And um, what's going wrong here? Oh, this needs a. Request params digits, right? Is that how that works? Yeah. So basically, I have a simple get request when if ever I run this server, Anytime somebody navigates to search slash some sequence of digits, I'm going to pull out those digits and just send them back. So let's run this server and let's get rid of, um, I'm going to get rid of just this um, on end stuff right now. I don't need this. Uh, actually, I'm just going to write console log billion digits loaded. And let me run the server. Mm, error. Oh, I've got install express. So express is a, a, micro, a nice framework for making web servers in Node. Now let me run it again. So I'm listening at port 3000. The billion digits are loaded. I'm going to go to localhost 3000. There's nothing there. But now if I go to slash search slash one, like, four, three, three, two, five, four. Ah, I see it. I got it, and I sent it back. Guess what I can do now? Oh, this is really exciting. So now, if I go back to, sorry, everybody. Mm. So if I take this code where I was searching before, And I bring it up here, and I can say search equals request params digits. Search for it within the digits, and then send that response back. But ultimately, I want to turn make this JSON. So I'm going to say index. I'm going to make this a nice little JSON object. Um, and I'll also send back what was the search uh, string as well. So let's try this one more time. And let's switch to a million digits to make this, I know that it runs uh, faster. So I'm going to just change this to a million digits, go back to the browser, hit refresh. Oh, I've got to restart the server. Go back to the browser. And there we go. This particular sequence of digits was found at that index. Let's double check this with Fathom's peak and pi. The digits were 43324. It's found at the 35th thousand, at the 35th 572nd digit of pi. Is that what I got? Yes, that's what I got. So my search is working. And now, ah, ah, let's change it. Well, let's get it working from our interface first. Then we'll try it with a billion digits. So now I don't want to just do this by hard coding this into the browser. I want to go back to my P5 code. And in my P5 code, I'm not going to load the data file there. I don't even need to do the search there. So index of can go, to way, go away. But whenever I want to search it up, <laughs> Instead of actually running the search, I'm going to make a get request. So I'm going to say load JSON. The, the URL is and HTTP. Well, let's just grip, grab it. Localhost colon 3000 slash search. And then add in the actual search value. This is a string literal, which is an incredibly convenient way to put a variable into a string. I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to call load JSON got result, and then when I get the result, the result comes back in index, and that is where I'm going to um, put it in the uh, paragraph. Get rid of these things I don't need. So basically, this is just the interface. And the interface, whenever an uh, interface goes and asks the server to look in the digits, with the server being the one that can handle holding on to those billion digits. So, um, but um, I need to host this web page. And the way that I'm going to do that is use Express the same express server that is serving up the digits of pi, uh, the, the index value into the digits of pi to serve up these web pages. And that I can do with uh, adding like express.static something or other. Let me go look back to my older tutorials about this. It's right here, app.use express static public. So I want to host everything that's in a directory called public, which happens to be what I just called it. back into the server. There we go. And you can see I have this, the P5 sketch that I've been working with is in the directory public. We don't need this million digits of pi anymore. There, it's not part of the client at all, just part of the server. Let me restart the server. Let me go to localhost 3000. Mm. Uncaught error, raw is not defined. So I've got some errors in my P5 code. Oh, I don't need, um, the digits no longer belongs here. There's some weird extra error about style.css. I'm not concerned with that. Let's just get rid of that. There we go. OK, now. Ooh, OK. It's searching. It's always finding negative 2 because it's searching for this like colon. What? What? Where did that colon come from? Where did I put that in by accident? Oh, look at that. Oh. It's just an extra colon that I had actually in the string that goes away. Bye, go away, colon. It works. It's searching in pi, but the searching is happening on the server. So now it's time. This is the grand finale of today's coding train pi day challenge. We are going to search in one billion digits of pi to find any given sequence of digits. It is time. I'm going to do it. I'm to go back to my server code. <laughs> that was anticlimactic. I'm going to change it to loading the billion digits of pi. I'm going to uh, restart the server. I got to wait. It loaded the billion digits. It's now waiting for me. Going back to the web page. Let me just refresh this web page. And I don't know, let's try. Searching. Question is, has it found it? No, it didn't find that. So Kim, somebody needs to fact check this for me. Is that sequence not in the first billion digits of pi? That sequence is not either. It was finding it before. Yep, it found that one. So this so far is the longest sequence I've been able to find. Let me just change this to a five, and it found that. It takes a while, it's slow, it's slow. David suggested a string, 207-75510. Let's see if that works. 
five, one, zero. There. This is at digit number 176,866,377. That's pretty good. I suppose I could look up in that text file I have. Oh, I have an idea. Let's look at what's in that text file, the last few digits. Um, um, digits dot, oh, let's start uh, digits dot length minus 10. I could use like substring or something, but I'm just like afraid. So let me print out the last 10 digits in the first billion digits of pi. Wait, what just happened there? Oh, no, no, no. Digits car, car at. Fun, OK. <laughs> Does it really have to be like this? I'm doing this in the weirdest, most nonsensical way. So with a little detective work, I have determined that these are the last 10 digits in the first billion digits of pi. So just to see how slow is the searching, I'm going to refresh this page. And I'm going to paste those last 10 digits into here, and we're going to see how long it takes. There we go. It found it. And that's not so terrible. So we can, even with my crude brute force algorithm, find any sequence of digits in the first 1 billion digits of pi by having both a server and client talk to each other. So many possibilities here. How could you optimize the search algorithm? How could you make the API do all sorts of more fun, creative things to give you more information about what's in Pi? Could you put this onto Glitch? So we can, maybe we can make this like, uh, Glitch is a, a, a hosting website that allows you to deploy different kind of creative web applications. So maybe I can make a version of this that runs on Glitch that people could uh, remix. I will include a link to that if I can get it to work in this video's description. And um, you could just be much more creative about the interface. And once again, what are you actually really searching for? Could you search for secret messages in Pi by thinking about encoding text into digits? Music in Pi by encoding uh, musical notes and melodies and rhythms into digits, colors into digits. What data could you search for in Pi? And what, what wonderful things could you discover that way? And maybe you could find a text file with more than a billion digits and make your own version that searches into an even larger number of digits of Pi. I hope you enjoyed this Pi Day coding challenge. I will sing you out with my song about the last 10 digits in the um, first 1 billion digits of Pi which has not been rehearsed or planned, and this ukulele hasn't even been tuned in like a month, so I really hope this doesn't end up in the video and gets edited out instead. Five, two, seven, five, zero. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> what did I do last year? We're not going to do the song. I don't have time. I'll come back tomorrow and do the song if I have time. <laughs> Thank you for watching this Coding Train Coding Challenge uh, Pi Day. Thanks to Fathom Information Design for the inspiration uh, with Peeking Inside Pi. And thanks also to uh, Fontan Bibas uh, and all of, all of you watching this live on the, uh, uh, during the live stream uh, with all of the uh, suggestions and help that you offered. I'll see you soon next time on the Coding Train. Uh, have a great day, ride, all aboard, all that nonsense. What, my catchphrase, it's coming one day. Oh, this is my catchphrase. It's not a phrase. It's a sound. It's a train whistle sound. That's my catchphrase. <laughs>
Okay. All right, everybody, I am really under the gun in terms of time because I have to pick up my daughter at school at 4.20. <clears throat> Settle down, people! That's the actual time I have to go pick her up. And um, it takes me a little while to pack up everything, and it takes me a little while to take the subway or walk there, depending on what's happening with the subway. I mean, if I walk, or I, don't, I actually definitely don't have to. It's a 45-minute walk from here, so there's no way I can walk. i got to take the subway. Um, so thank you, everybody. I'm going to just, like, quickly race out of here. Um, I'm going to be doing oh, that's <laughs> I'm going to be doing some um, coding in the cabana video soon. I was going to spin the wheel. I might do like a quick I'm going to be home a lot. So it seems like the way things are going <laughs> as I discussed quite a bit at the beginning of this live stream is I'm not going to be able to be at work here in the studio as often or perhaps never for a, the t for a period of time. So I might try to figure out live streaming from home. I might make more just coding the cabana videos. Stay tuned. Please join the Discord where I will announce all this stuff and all of that. Um, and so I will see you all soon. Thank you for watching this. Um, I don't know if this is going to be able to get edited together into something by Saturday. Um, I, if it can't, then it, it can't. But we'll, I'm going to give it a try. So stay tuned. Wait for Saturday. Maybe we'll add some extra fun things in it. If you have any creative ideas, want to participate in that, join the Discord. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, I'm not ready to leave yet. I'm going to hit stop recording. I'll leave it open for a second while I do some of my cleanup stuff. Stop recording. I hope this worked. What are you going to do if it doesn't? No problem. Um, yeah, the whole 1 million subscriber thing. I got to deal with that too. All right, everybody. Uh, duh, 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 duh. See you later. Um, time for the This Dot song. As always, I always forget the This Dot, This Dot, This Dot, This Dot. I'm going to do Thanks again to Brilliant, sponsor of today's live stream. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> I completely boxed the sponsorship today. I'm really a little bit out of sorts. Did my best. And see you all soon. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget to this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget to this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. Song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget this dot. I'm gonna do the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot, the this dot song. Never forget the this dot. Somebody composed that song for me. I'm gonna say once again, here we go. Sing it with me. It's the forward partition coordinate song. The forward to Cartesian coordinate song. <clears throat> Auto tune and the internet will fix that for me. Sing it with me. It's the forward to Cartesian. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. It's the forward to Cartesian coordinate song. Unicorns and rainbows and cupcakes. What else is there? Yes, kittens. Thank you very much. Kittens and rainbows and cupcakes. Notice that. Look what I get. I'm really losing my mind. Okay, let's do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens.
I feel just sort of like a nice feeling of relaxation. Everything's going to be okay today. Dream is not broken. It has not frozen. This is a, this is a wonderful thing. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm really getting to something. I need my sound effect. Syntax I forgot. Uh, there was one other thing here that I think is important that I will use continuously over and over again. All sorts of text generation analysis things that I will use continuously over and over again. First thing I need to do is, yes, kittens, kittens, kittens. I really lose my mind. Okay, we're gonna do it. Kittens and kittens and kittens and kittens, 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 kittens and kittens and kittens and dust the dime, yeah.